going on this welterweight matchup. Five fans, we are set to go with our next bout this evening. Eight rounds scheduled in the welterweight division. Presented by Golden Boy Promotions with our sponsors Corona Extra, La Cerveza Mas Fina, and O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. The three judges scoring this bout at ringside, Billy Ray. Also, Mike Streisand and Rocky Young. When the bell rings, referee in charge of the action, Frank Centaur Jr. Introducing to you first, finding out of the red corner, wearing the colors of his homeland of Ghana, red, green, and gold. He weighed in officially 147 pounds and brings a perfect record that stands at 16 victories. No defeats and eight wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Brooklyn, New York, by way of Accra, Ghana, here is the undefeated Emmanuel Ice Cold Martin! And next is opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the colors of the USA, red, white, and blue. He weighed in officially 146 and three quarter pounds and also brings a perfect record, standing at eight victories, no defeats, and seven big wins coming by way of knockout. Here is a 2012 U.S. Olympic boxer from Dallas, Texas, the undefeated Errol, the true Spence Jr. Let's go. Here we go. All right, guys, going over all the rules in the dressing room. Got all the rules down, right? Your trunks are both about where they're supposed to be. Keep your blows here or above, all right? I say break, take a step back and break, stop punching. Questions? Questions? Good luck, fellas. Welterweight action scheduled for eight from here at the BBT Center in Sunrise, Florida. Ice cold Emmanuel Larte is what they call him from Ghana. And, it, you know, when you read about him and they talk about him, they're actually comparing him to the, the greatest Zuma Nelson, the greatest African boxer ever who had those uh, exciting victories over uh, Wilfredo Gomez from Puerto Rico. But we'll have to see about that. But, you know, Spence might be in for a tough test in his ninth professional fight. You see Spence in the red, white, and blue trunks. Actually, silver. I think any fighter from Ghana, a lot of times, is going to have the, you know, all this right away. You're going to make those comparisons. Can he match up to the talent of Azuma Nelson? Uh, you know, he, body language here shows that Larte came to win. So we'll see if Spence can change his mind about that, if, if he hits him with anything solid. we got two left-handers in the ring, so it was always a concern sometimes because they don't see that very often. If there'll be some cause for concern with headbutts and that type of thing. Larte comes up pumping the jab. Very stockily built, very compact. You can tell he's in great shape. He's watched tape on Spence. He knows what he's in against. And he knows what, what he could do if he pulled off a huge upset tonight and putting his name out there in the welterweight division. Absolutely. The, a win for either guy tonight, because it's a step up for both of them, really pushes them a lot further into their career than probably any of their wins prior to, to tonight. Larte just had a victory over an undefeated prospect, Jonathan Batista, in Atlantic City at the Tropicana. A unanimous decision in a six-rounder. Batista out of the Dominican Republic, who went on to lose to Kermit Citron. But you could tell he's a skilled fighter, and sometimes, like you said, the guys that come from the African continent, they're, they're hard to, to gauge. They're always tough. And he uh, won the African Boxing Union Championship, the light weight title in 2007, beating a Kaiser Mabuza. So he's one of the best from that continent and looking to make his way over here. Over the top missing with Spence right there. Spence being very patient and, and being cautious. He knows he's in against a tough fighter. Yeah, as is Larte boxing on the back foot and trying to see if he can lure Spence in. So both guys right now having a bit of a chess match with their jabs. I'm gonna see if they can make the other one bite. Oh, big right, big left hand over the top. And you see Larte holding on. I think he got hit right there and hurt, Polly. Well, he, he grabbed his leg right there. I mean, that was a big shot. And you see Larte holding, and down he goes, grabbing on and holding on. Oh, Spence kind of uses forearms there. And he kind of forced it. Into, into his uh, neck. Smart, smart move by Larte, though, I'll tell you, man. He grabbed the Spence by the leg when he hit him with a with solid left hand. It prevented Spence from following up. He's got Larte's attention now. 
Wobble going backwards, a little bit off balance there. I don't think that was from a punch so much when Spencer's off balance. But Larte's bringing on the heat here. 12 seconds left in a welterweight fight scheduled for eight. And you see the power of that left hand from Spence right there in the first round. Now they're going to fight right to the end, and Larte holding on. Like you said, a veteran move right there. <laughs> He got Larte's attention. He's got an angry look now. Do you want to win this fight? Do you want to win this fight? Stop backing up. Stop going forward. You better start going forward. Yeah, but we can go for the car. Keep it in with the gap. Pop, pop, pop. Keep it open up. Hey, let's go. Hey. If you got a shot in that, you can get me with the two eyes open. Derek James in his corner there. Let's take a look at some of the action, Paulie. Yeah, here's how uh, you see Spence set up the great left hand right after a double jab, and you see Larte grab him by the leg. Smart move because it prevented Spence from following up and maybe getting a real knockdown. And here, you, <laughs> you see in the next clinch, forearm. Spence is trying to make, make room, you know? I mean, both guys, I mean, doing what they're supposed to do there. Larte kind of needed the break after taking the left hand, and Spence wanted to create room so he can continue to follow up. So, you know, it's a fight, man. Sometimes it gets rough. Larte comes out round number two, scheduled for eight this welterweight fight. Pump of that jab, picking up the pace a little bit for him. I believe he was stung by the hard left hand from Errol Spence in that first round. And now he has picked up <laughs> the heat, but he's gonna get backed up if he gets careful. Well, the thing Harry Keaton in the corner of Larte told him, don't back up, stop backing up. So if he, if he starts coming forward, Spence is looking to come forward. We can get some fireworks here. And Levi Smith, on the other hand, in the corner of uh, Spence told him to keep opening up Larte with the jab and setting up those power shots after the jab. That wicked left hand lands again. You see Larte holding on. As Polly pointed out, it's a veteran move so that, that Spence can't follow up. Yes, it seems like Spence is landing the initial power shot. He's starting to find a home for it. Now it's a matter of can he get the follow up. Left up top, downstairs with the right. Letting his hands go as Larte covers up on the ropes. Not a good spot for him to be in. You let Spence tee off, and he will. It's hard to judge that power that Spence has, but it, you, you can tell it when it lands. Yeah, yeah, he, and again, this is a, a guy in Larte, at, like we said before, undefeated record, so he's not going to go out with the first power shot he gets hit with. But, but Spence continuing to try to pile it on. Larte's gonna have to make some adjustments here and try to figure out how to open Spence up for his own offense because right now it's been uh, it's been Spence landing the better shots. Well, Larte came to the United States in 2011, knowing that he had new worlds to conquer if he could. I don't know if he anticipated that this quickly he would be in against such a top prospect as uh, as Spence, but of course you'll take it when you can get it in this business. And a lot on the line for him to keep him undefeated, the African fighter, and uh, prove that he belongs over here amongst this type of competition. A great, a great opportunity for him. Well, you know, it was an opportunity for him. He's got twice as many professional fights as Errol Spence. So, you know, it's a calculated risk by he and his advisors and managers. Uh, actually, Ron Scott Stephen handles Vartes. There you go. Again, with Spence opening up. Spence digging the body. Took one right there on the hip bone, but he's, he's not afraid to get in there tight and do the damage. Oh, over the top with the left hand, right hand. Right hook over the top. Darte does a wise move and steps away from the ropes at this point. 17 seconds left in round number two. And glad you're watching Gold Boy Boxing on Fox Sports 1. Listening into the corner between rounds, Polly, uh, Ice Cold's corner over there, Larte, they want him to pick it up, and they're threatening to stop the fight. I don't know why they do that. It's just a motivation factor. They just want him to really uh, pick up the pace, and I don't know how you do that when you're getting hit with the rights and the lefts that he's getting hit with. Yeah, that's the thing. It's a lot tougher to get you to be the, when you're the one taking the shots from a hard puncher like Earl Spence to, you know, be as aggressive as they'd like Larte to be in the corner. But he's going to have to figure out a different way here, uh, a different tactic or something, make an adjustment uh, and try to get to Spence somehow. 
jabs. Well, he's not throwing a real, there's the pump of the jab a little bit there, but it's not effective. It's more of a measuring type jab as he tries to work his way in, but he's mostly going backwards. And Spence is on the prowl right now. Big left hand. Tonight's CompuBox stats are brought to you by ThrowdownFantasy.com. Draft fighters, track stats, and win. Frank Satori warning about the extracurricular there inside with the elbows. Oh, left hand just caught Spence right there. He took it, but that was an awkward angle, and it caught Spence. And here he comes back, though. No worse for the wear. And he, he answered right away. He kind, yeah. of, kind of to show to Larte that did nothing to him. That was Larte's chance to really try to follow up with something, but instead Spence followed up with the aggression. More of an elbow that caught him right there, too, and that's what I began to think. When you get a frustrated fighter, you start getting elbows and, and shoulder shoves and all that kind of stuff. And you, as a pro, you got to be ready for it, Paul. Yeah, right? regardless. I mean, it, it still landed pretty hard, whatever it was. It still so, hurts. You know, so the fact that Spence came right back and fired his thunder instead of instead of what should have been Larte following up, you know, it, it's kind of a mental statement he makes to his opponent. Like, hey, man, that's not going to work on me. I'm still going to come pummel you. He's got, he's, he's got Dante in the corner right now, digging into the body. Digging downstairs once again. Dante weakly answering. Not much behind it. If you stay there, Spence will eat you up. Although he is respectful of Larte at this point. He's got the right distance, Polly. Just outside of Larte. Whatever he's the left hand that landed right there. Sometimes Larte pulls in a way where he's actually in the in the crossfire of that straight left hand. He makes it easier for Spence to set him up for it. Two of those punches got through the gloves. Larte wisely sashays to the side right now, down the ropes to get away from the corner. Still holding that left hand dangerously low. Because we know that Spence's power shot is the left hand. Final seconds left in round number three. It's been a good pace in this welterweight fight. Very enjoyable to watch these guys work. And Spence is having to learn a few lessons about fighting a guy that's bringing it tonight, everything he has, Larte. So this has not been easy work compared to the last four fights where first round knockouts at all for Spence. Yeah, absolutely. He's getting, he's, he's going to have to do some rounds tonight. And, you know, sometimes that's, they're not always easy knockouts. There's a, some action from that last round with Larte throwing that counter left hand, but it was so late that it kind of misses and uh, ends up catching Spence with the elbow. Now Spence is known for his body work. And there you go. You, speaking of the body work, Spence kind of backing up Larte to the ropes and throwing a couple of shots to the body there. It's been high paced. We're heading to round four, scheduled for eight. Whether or not it'll make eight is anybody's guess. These are welterweights. Emmanuel Larte in the red trunks with the green and gold trim. Silver, blue, and red is Errol Spence Jr. Fighting out of Dallas, Texas. And you know, he's, he's moving into deeper water than he's accustomed to as a pro right here too, into the fourth round. And he's been taking care of seven and eight, seven of his eight fights, but knockouts early. So, you know, this is a learning experience for Spence. We'll see, you know, if he can dig down. Brilliant amateur career, so he knows what he's doing. Well, just, this is all part of the part of the making the steps to getting into the top of the sport. You know, you, you need these kind of fights. You know, you, you go rounds, durable guys, guys who come to win. And Spence is taking the the play away from Larte consistently in every round, and that's that's all you can do if your guy doesn't go anywhere. Keep beat on him. <laughs> nice left hand there, tried an uppercut inside. Larte swinging wildly and missing. Smith digging the right hand body shot, comes back with the left hand body shot. They tie up right here. But look at Smith's work downstairs. Got a little bit of a right there, but there's nothing behind it. Larte always seems to be not at the right distance offensively. He's either too close and smothering himself or too far and coming up short. You know, he and, and that could be a, a product of Spence's jab keeping him off balance, but you know. Uh, Larte's gonna have to make some kind of adjustment in order to land his offense at his distance and not a, not be at Spence's distance all the time. 
Galarte looking like the more weary of the fighters at this point because he has absorbed more punishment, and that will take the steam out of you in terms of endurance. Absolutely. Nice work right there from Spence, coming from different angles, throwing different kinds of punches. He's, he's like chopping down a tree at this point, isn't he? He's, yeah. Larte's in great shape, but he's getting a lot of punishment on those inside punches right there. Polly can tell you about those belt line punches. <laughs> I know even Spence is in great shape because he's, he's really putting in the work in this round. Well, he knew what he was coming up against in this fight and, and, and frankly looking forward to it to have a step up in competition compared to what he's seen. You know, that's the thing, you know, taking punishment makes you tired, but also dishing punishment makes you tired. So you got to be in shape to give it as well as take it. Yeah, this is the kind of opponent that Spence needs at this point in his career. He's getting too many easy knockouts. You run the risk of kind of going stale or getting stagnant. This is the kind of guy... And there's a good shot. Nice you know, right hand from Spence right there. This is yeah. the kind, of, kind of guy you get to work on your entire arsenal. And, he, uh, he's, he's certainly thrown it. And you know, like I said, you know, we're talking about his final seconds of this round. We'll talk about this a little more. Another good round for Errol Spence. You're watching Golden Boy Boxing on Fox Sports 1. Round number five in this welterweight matchup. Errol Spence Jr. in the red, white, and silver trunks. Taking on Emmanuel Larte in the red, gold, and green. It's been high-paced action. It's been good work for Spence. You can tell there's a talent gap, but not a determination gap. As Larte's still in there, and he's taking a lot of shots. And the learning curve has increased considerably for Spence in his ninth professional fight. You see Larte with the, the front hand down slip there. You see he's got his lead hand down. Uh, he's just pawing with the jab. It's almost like a, a counter puncher's mentality, but he's not shooting the counters the way he should. And he allows Spence to get off and really doesn't make him pay. Well, we, we figured Larte would, would be tough. It's just a matter of matching up the skill level. He doesn't have the, he doesn't have the power or the speed of Spence, but he certainly got the determination. Snuck it on the left hand right there. Of course, yeah, a good left hand by Spence. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's almost like he's trying to lure Spence in, but lure him into what? You know, he's got to set that trap and then actually pull the trigger. Great point. He lures him in, there's nothing behind it. There it is again. He's pulling the jab, looking to lure Spence in. Tying up right now, head, head, knowing that Spence is going to be bringing some heat behind that. We're in the fifth round and uh, scheduled for eight. The test of conditioning right about now, too, as much as Spence has been throwing in there. Left hand over the top for Marte, but he hasn't won around, obviously, Polly. Yeah, but you know, at least a left hand like that shows Spence that he's a live guy, he's still there, and he's not ready for the taking quite yet. So keep Spence on his P's and Q's and keep him sharp. Fifty seconds left in round number five. <laughs> Briefly there, Larte had some effectiveness. Yeah, a couple of great exchanges in this yep. round. Larte showing me some life, but again, he looks to hold in the crunches. Frank Satori's been pretty busy as the third man in the ring tonight. He's keeping a sharp eye right now on Marte. You never can tell how much damage a fighter has suffered, but he's not, been, he's not really been wobbled at all. He's been hit hard. Uh, I think Larte's shown the most effort out of the whole fight for him thus far this round. I don't know if he's won the round, but he's, he's gone for it more this round than he has in previous rounds. They got some water in the corner over in Larte's corner, and now they're back in action right here. Round number six, Larte's corner told him that uh, he only had two rounds left. That'd be incorrect. There's three, there's three rounds left counting this one, if it goes that far. Maybe they want to pick up the pace faster. Come on, you got, come on. 
Humping the right hand. Tonight's CompuBot stats are brought to you by ThrowdownFantasy.com. Draft fighters, track stats, and win. Hey, Holly, going into the sixth round, how do you think Spence has adjusted to what he's, he's faced here? He hasn't been careless. He, he hasn't, you know, fallen in love with trying to knock this guy out. He's, he's been working him down as, as much as he can. Yeah, you know, you like to see that a guy like Spence who's gotten used to knocking guys out, not getting careless in order to try to get the knockout. You know, he's, he's resigned himself to the fact that he may have to work for this knockout. And he knows he's in good enough shape to try to get it. And if he doesn't, well, he's in good enough shape to go the distance. And so you like to see the mature, that maturity in poise in a fighter. He just clipped a left hand over the right ear of Larte right there. And these quick exchanges here, Larte has not been on the ropes as much as he was before. This is a small ring tonight, by the way, 18 feet. If you had a couple of heavyweights in there, they'd have nowhere to go. <laughs> so these are both weights. Left hand, nice job. And Spence is really working on him right here. And he's content to be up against those ropes, which before the fight, they're out here checking him. The referees were concerned they might be a little bit loose. And that, that can happen, Polly, sometimes when you set up these rings. That the, the, the ropes can be a little bit loose. And, oh, left hand. Yep, nice left hand. Nothing shot loose about that left hand. No, that was tight. <laughs> You see the confidence of the spring and Errol Spence now. He knows he's winning this fight, and he'll take it if he can get it, an opportunity to land the big shot. But he's being patient. Yeah, it's all an experience here, you know, and, and the experience you get is going the rounds, or trying to open up a guy who, you know, you may have you may have frustrated into stopping. He stopped trying to win. Larte, a lot of times, oh, which good left hand by Spence, a lot of times just closing up, not opening right up hand. as much as he should. You know, he might be resigned to trying to go the distance, so it's a matter of, you know, can you get him to open up a little more and try to get him out of there? There he goes. He's got the flurry going. Lorte up on his toes, but he's not landing anything. Throwing a little bit of a heart of a jab, trying to get out of there, but the crowd likes it when Errol Spence lets his hands go and throws the big punches. And you see the referee getting a close eye at Lorte right now to see how effective those punches have been. You know, Larte throws that double left jab a lot and then doesn't follow it up with anything else. He might want to try at least a straight left hand to the stomach or something just to give Spence something to think about. He kind of just tosses it out there and there's a good left hand by Spence. And he just got clipped with the left hand right there too. This round now. Over 30 seconds long, the timekeeper might have fell asleep. Did the timekeeper fall asleep? We're moving up on a four-minute round here, folks. A really test the conditioning of both guys. Well, Spence is able just to wear it down at this point. We're heading a four-minute round. We've got a problem with the timekeeper. We just got the 10-second warning from the timekeeper. A minute late. A minute late. Well, you see a little bit of everything in this sport, folks. And there's finally the bell. Uh, we, we ran out of clock, Polly. We yeah. only got a three-minute clock. Yeah, we man. only get three at a time. Yeah. The timekeeper was on a different clock. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, he's gotten a jolt. Tomorrow, catch an all-new episode of the show critics are calling Brutally Honest and the most revealing portrait of Mike Tyson yet. If you think you know him, think again. Don't miss an all-new episode of Being Mike Tyson tomorrow at 10.30 p.m. Eastern, right here on Fox Sports 1. Can you walk in? A couple of replays here from the last round. You watch Spence move his way in behind the jab and then a sharp straight left hand with Larte. And here's the counter left hand over the top of the jab by Larte. Larte's jab becoming kind of repetitive in the way he throws it. It's not rhythmic. It's, he's not changing the pace on it. So you start to be able, you start to be able to, you know, get the get the timing down on him and be able to counter punch him. Well, I mentioned that Larte came in in, in great shape, but it, it, you can see it's been attrition so far. He, he doesn't really have that left hand is not effective at all as it jabs. 
And uh, Spence, you know, a good way to close the show is if he could get him out of there. I wouldn't be surprised if he does. But uh, Larte showed a pretty good chin. We still haven't, Spence's chin still really hasn't been tested in his professional fights yet, so he hasn't really gotten hit by any really hard shots. Yeah, Larte's landed one or two shots here and there. Maybe the elbow might have been the best shot. Yeah, the best shot was the elbow. <laughs> but um, it's not deterred Spence at all. Looping right hook upstairs. Larte retreating once again and ties up. And in round number seven, he may be a little bit in survival mode at this point. Laying against the ropes, covering up, and getting hit. And that's the thing. A guy like Spence will take the fight out of you, so it's a matter of Larte, has Larte decided to just try to go the distance, or will he still continue to try to win? And that's where what we're trying to figure out here at this point. You know, it's up to him now to try to throw that offense because he can't win on points anymore. He's got to go for the KO. Is he willing to risk that against a power puncher like Errol Spence? Still gets another body shot. The Spence right there, right on the belt line. Continues to walk Larte down. Larte's got the reverse gear going, and he's run out of room over there in the corner. And Spence usually pounces. What you doing right here? He's just pounding away to the body in the belt line right there. That's it. You just got to keep working. I mean, just, if, if Larte won't punch back, just keep hitting him. He's you know? like punching the heavy bag right here. He might crumple up if he stays right there. Oh, got clipped with a left hand and a right hand. Oh, two good punches inside. Right through the gloves right there. Errol Spence got to be careful not to punch himself out here, but if the opportunity is there, he's going to keep punching, Paulie. Marte's got to get himself off the ropes is what he's got to do. I, mean, I don't know why he's continuing to stay there. Even when Spence takes a step back, Larte doesn't oblige and step around. He, he just steps, he just stays on the ropes. And it's like, it's like he thinks he's got Spence where he wants him. In the meantime, Spence has him where he wants him. Larte's frustrated at this point and uh, he's lost all semblance of having a game plan. 50 seconds left in round number seven. I mean, he's taken a lot of punishment from Errol Spence Jr. tonight. But you got to give Spence credit. He hasn't made any mistakes to allow Larte back in this because that's a lot that has to do with the fact that Larte was sitting on the ropes for a minute. Of course, and still sharp defensively. You know, when Larte does show some life and throw some shots, you know, Spence is on it. His, ra his radar detects it. He, he slips it. 20 seconds left, round number seven. Scheduled for eight. Welterweight fight. Good body shot by Larte there. Sometimes you gotta work hard, and tonight, ooh, that's a nice another body shot right there. In a round Spence had dominated right at the close, Larte hits him with a good hook and makes his legs buckle. Spence got it right out of there. Um, definitely a shot that seemed like Earl Spence felt. Would have been interesting to see if there was more time for Larte to, to follow up. But let's see if Larte goes for Broke in the last round. Well, he's trying to. He's letting his hands go. And in Spence's corner, they were warning him, don't lure yourself. Or let him lure you into a spot where you're going to get caught like you did at the end of that round. You're winning the fight. You're winning on points. Sometimes you've got to take what you can get and not do anything stupid. So we'll see the last 220 of this fight in the welterweight race. And for the first time all night, Spence is backing up in this round. Exactly. So I don't know if he's still trying to recover from the shot or if he's just taking the game plan and, like the corner said and say, hey, man, don't take too many chances, you're winning. He did left hand for Spence right there to get out of it. This is a Larte we haven't seen in the first seven rounds. Here he is coming on. And a more effective jab and working his way in, cutting off the space and, and cutting the ring off. Yeah, he's actually stepping, stepping in. Stepping forward. Strongly so that he can get to Spence with the left hand after after the double jab. Where was this, Larte, like you said? He, he wasn't here for the first seven rounds, I can tell you. But look at this guy. Cutting off the ring. And you've got to remember, deep waters for the fighter. Night professional fight for Spence. Going the distance of an eight-rounder right here against a guy who refused to uh, to go down, although he landed a lot of punches. But, Paulie, Spence has thrown a lot, a lot of punches in this fight. Yeah, you know, it, it can be uh, difficult. You know, he hasn't gone eight rounds before. He's in the eighth round. He got clipped at the end of the last round, a shot that may have hurt him. So, you know, a lot of firsts for old Spence. It's part of the learning process, but here with Larte having just over a minute, I mean, this is his chance to steal the fight here. He's got to get the stoppage. I mean, at this point, he's hopelessly behind. One minute left in the fight. And it's been all Larte finally in the final round here. 
The Spence has got to have that ring savvy. He's got to know where he stands on the cards. His corner, listen to his corner. And after getting clipped right there at the end of round seven, I mean the last second, got hit with a right, finally pointed out. And here he is in survival mode and trying to get out of here from Sunrise, Florida with a W. 30 seconds left in this fight. Another good hook by Larte. Another one. Spence opening up. He's not backing away. He's not running. It's just a matter of killing the clock here. Usually he should be using his jab and, uh, you know, killing the clock at this point. Larte has to go for it, and he has. He has gone for it. And you just would have liked to see this from Larte uh, a lot sooner in the fight. I don't know what he figured out, but he got more aggressive and started bringing it in round number eight and got himself around, but maybe the only one out of the eight. I'll tell you, uh, what he figured out is that Errol Spence will respect his power if you clip them right. He says he figured out a little bit late. Figured out way late. We'll be back with the judges' decisions in this one. You're watching Golden Boy Boxing on Fox Sports 1. Okay, let's take a look at the final punch stats from this welterweight fight that went the distance. Errol Spence Jr. landed far more punches and threw a lot of punches, and that might have been a telling factor in that final round when he seemed to learn out of gas. And no thanks to the right hand he caught at the very last second of round number seven. Errol Spence landing 30% of his punches. He was in against a tough guy, Paulie, and, uh, and it, it shows up in the punch stats and the fact that he, he couldn't get that knockout he's been so accustomed to. Let's take a look at some of that final round action when uh, Larte woke up. Oh, here, action from the whole fight. It's that first it's the whole hand. fight. Let's start the first round. Sorry. Second round here. Working Larte on the ropes. Well, and Spence, Spence had, you know, moved his hands a lot over the course of the fight. The first time going eight rounds, he showed that he's uh, in very good shape. You know, a lot of times Larte would lay on the ropes like this and allow Spence to tee off. It w and Spence did. Spence, Spence obliged him. You know, uh, once in a while, Larte would show some life, throw something back. But again, it was Spence backing him up for the duration of the fight, moving his hands. You know, and here we got to round seven where Spence had been dominating, and then right at the end of the round, gets clipped with a good right hook and actually felt it. Lucky for him, it was the end of the round, though. <laughs> All right, let's go get the decision from Joe Martinez. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds of boxing, we go to the scorecards and we have a unanimous decision. All three judges see it the same. 79-73 for your winner by unanimous decision and still undefeated, Errol the True Spence Jr. Errol Spence Jr. goes to 9-0, going the distance in an eight-rounder. A very tough challenge for him tonight, but he got the job done, and that's what counts. He learned a lot in there as a professional facing a tough opponent. He got hit, he got wobbled. Luckily for him, it was right at the end of a round seven. And in round eight, he faced a, a more of a Larte than we'd seen, but he walks away and keeps that record intact. A, a good performance for him tonight. His corner's gotta be pleased that he was, was patient, but he, he kept pounding away, Paulie. He just couldn't.